All right, so the point that I'm trying to make here is is the Bible is about a people who migrated out of the Caucasus. This is all spelt with the K here. Let's let's look into it. So if we look over here, we see we're in the Caspian and between the Caspian and the Black Sea. And right here we see a range of mountains dividing the north and the south. All right. And these in these mountains. Once the people begin to cross these mountain plains, they begin to enter into Armenia and then Turkey and then Assyria. This was the great kingdom of Assyria in this region here. This is the great kingdom of Mesopotamia right in here. And then this is Babylonia. All right. So you have the Euphrates River, which is right here. Then you have Babylon, uh, excuse me, Biblis. Biblis. Biblis is a little known city here in Lebanon. The reason why it's called Biblis is because the Canaanites, see here, Sidon here Biblis the Canaanites this was a trade port they were shipbuilders they were masons they built with stone they were navigators map makers they were the people who sold papyrus from out of Africa that grew only into the Nile River Valley right and they sold it to Cyprus and from Cyprus it went into Greece and into Rome, all right? And also into Syria, down into Mesopotamia and into Babylonia. So papyrus brought into a lot of money, a lot of economics, right? A, a lot of revenue into what we now call the North Africa, right? The crown of Africa, right? Now, if you notice, this is the most coveted land of this era, of this time. This is the reason why it's been occupied by forms, right? And this is what the stories are telling us. It's telling us about these people coming down from this region of the world, of Assyria, and they're, they're migrating down into the African pride lands and the African people are migrating upward up the Nile and they're meeting into these people and these two kingdoms clash over this but Africa is the source of resources all right it's the source of 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 supply so that is what the Bible is about all right. This is what they're telling us in the story. So when he says the river of life in Revelations 22, right in the second chapter, two, two, two. Right. So keep that in mind. All right. So we're going to start it off. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. What I'm suggesting that means is that the river of water is full of life meaning that it is like a highway it's a lot of people going up and down it's trade it's it's vacationing it's all kinds of stuff happening and we can i'll prove all of this stuff clear as crystal so it's beautiful water right proceeding from the throne of god well, we know throne is the seat inside a kingdom. A kingdom rules from his throne, right? So it's really, they, they chose to use throne instead of kingdom of God. This is part of the, the switching of the languages, but it has meaning to it, okay? And of the lamb. Now, a lamb 
the first thing people would be thinking is of Christ, which is not wrong because Christ is a teacher. So if you are following the teachings of Christ, then you should have the knowledge that would enable you to enter and live and dwell within the kingdom of God. Right. But it's also meaning that like a lamb is domesticated from the mouflin. All right. The mouflin. Right. It is domesticated. So it, it is able to live inside of the um, the kingdom. OK. All right. So if you look at let's just look up. The domestication of sheep, right? And when we look at the domestication of sheep, first of all, we, let's establish the region what we're talking about. So this is what we're t we're looking at on the map, on the map, right? We was right in. This is the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, and we saying that these people migrated out. Oh no, this is the Caspian Sea, and this is. This is the Black Sea and this is the Caspian Sea. And they're migrating down from these mountains, this mountain range here. And they are the people who had to domesticate the sheep, the pigs, the cattle, the goats in order to survive the winter. Right. To be able to survive, they had to learn how to deal with the animals in a different way. Right. And this is the this is be above the Fertile Crescent. So it was going to come a point in time where these two kingdoms meet. And this is what the Bible is about. So this is what I'm about to prove to you and show you. But first, we want to show you how these people up here manipulated the bloodlines, knew how to domesticate this creature to this creature, the wolf to the dog, the mufflin to the sheep. And the man into a domesticated form of man. The African into the African-American. Using, using bloodline, tactics of the bloodline. And so we know that the history of domesticated sheep goes back between 11,000 and 9,000 BC. And the domest uh, domestication of the wild Muflun, Muflun, in ancient Mesopotamia. So you see the region where we're talk, talking about, right? It is historically a region of Western Asia, Caucasus Asians, Caucasians, situated within the Tigris Euphrates River system. It's very important that you're going to have to know where this Euphrates River system is, right? See the, the, the river system, right? So Mesopotamia uh, in the northern part of the Fertile Crescent, in the northern part of the Fertile Crescent. It's very important. Mesopotamia occupies most of present day Iraq and Kuwait. So it's telling you it goes as far south as Kuwait. The historical region includes the head of the Persian Gulf and parts of present day Iran. All right. So um, we have an idea of where the domestication of sheep is and the demographics of ancient Mesopotamia, which is where Abram is. So Abram is the personification of these people who domesticated herds. OK. And Abel. OK, is 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 like the Abram bloodline that was made up through the magic of Seth. Okay, but we'll go. We have to go through that. We don't want to get too far off. So the lamb, the domesticated, right? Who are fit for the kingdom of God. Now, to prove all this stuff is true, it says in the middle of the of its streets, and on either side of the river. So it's telling you that the river is the streets. The river is the streets. The river 
is the streets. So you see the now River Valley people were a, they were a very, um, they, they were like Venice, right? They were a water culture, a river culture. Um, they, they harvest the papyrus that grew all around the Nile. You see the man standing on his raft. You see the man traveling with large fish, just as they did in the past. So all the evidence is showing you more and more about the details. These are the man of the dust. All right. And, um, there's a lot of beautiful history there. And, you know, I'm not actually, you know, I'm not bumping into the exact things that I'm looking for. But the culture was very much oriented with the river and traveling along the Nile and the sun culture, the sun, okay? So that's enough for this right here. <laughs>